Hi and welcome to this week's Three Legs Four Wheels F1 podcast. It's Paul here with Sean, Kieran, Lee. How are we all doing? Have we recovered from Canada yet? <laughs> well, we've I had two so. days. Yeah. Shush, this is meant to be Monday. Don't... Well, we've had one day. <laughs> so... <laughs> They've already lived that day. We can't We can't confuse them like that. It's the that. time difference because it was Canada and it was at a weird time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bloody galaxy quest are you trying to take us on? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, well, I had a couple of um, the usual technical issues last night. No, I'm not saying what it really was. Uh-huh, okay. Food allergies are bad, and we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have that sound effect on my board, no. sorry. <laughs> I, am <laughs> really, I am really glad if we'd have recorded last night, you wouldn't have needed it. <laughs> right, to answer your question, are we looking to recover from Canada? Do we need to recover well, from Canada? Well, the, sh- the shock of having a good race after Monaco. I think that was more welcome relief rather than something you need a, a recovery from. Yeah. It was the race we wanted and the race we deserved. Yes. It was the Batman yes. of Batman of Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was pretty entertaining, wasn't it? It was, it was good. Yeah, it was great. I, yeah. loved it. Uh, I can't think of a race that was as good as that in recent memory. And I mean I mean I'm including back to like twenty one as well. Interesting. I thought you were going to say 2011 Canada as well. Then <laughs> no, maybe not 2011 Canada. 2011 Canada was pretty, pretty fucking special. <laughs> but, uh... that, that, that is kept in a glass case in your brain, with, in case of emergency. Yeah. Smash button win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he just wants to smash button. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. No, I think we have. Yeah, it was um... great. It was like it was a great race. Yeah, we had uh, we had everything: overtakes, uncertainty, mm-hmm. wet weather, racing, weird Ferrari strategy. Yeah, that's back. Yes, <laughs> that's a throwback, isn't it? What more? What more <laughs> could you want? Logan Sargent in a wall. Oh, got that <laughs> twice. Got that twice. That. twice. What, again. <laughs> oh, what? I saw an insane thread on Twitter today, which oh, yes. was saying that what whatever could have gone wrong in the world happened specifically to screw over Logan Sargent. <laughs> and just every reply was, he's a bit crap though, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he's not, because in 2022 they did a thing and then that happened. And it, yeah. no, no, he's just he's just not great. <laughs> I mean, we, we knew it was going to be a Max Verstappen win when we saw the useless Williams pay driver in the wall and the safety car <laughs> came out too soon. <laughs> Bye, America. <laughs> I I think they know. Um, I mean the thing about Logan Sargent, I only I only found this out um in the last week, uh, courtesy of um, Stephen Terror, who uh, pointed this out. Um, his uncle is a multi billionaire. Logan's a multi billionaire. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Now, I don't know if this is how he's ended up with a drive in a car that's too quick for him, and his brother was in a car that was too quick for him. I, d- I don't know if these things are related. I mean, the uncle certainly is. Can you have a Nepo nephew? Where it comes from. That is, that is literally nepotism. It's <laughs> favouring the nephew. <laughs> Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I've Today on the three legs, four years. wheels language section. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need something like a brain shot for your mind. We'll get to that later. <laughs> um, yeah. So the team, the team by team, and we'll start with Williams because. Even though it was two DNFs, it was a bit binary. I reckon. It was yeah. one very self-inflicted Massively. DNF, wasn't it? And one wrong place, wrong time DNF. Yeah. 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 I mean, Sergeant, we can kind of gloss over because he lost it twice. Mm-hmm. Um, in different corners, at least. Oh. Didn't crash twice at the same corner. I mean, the first... Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, the first time he only nudged the barrier with the front. The second time he... Um, well, took most of the back end off the car and then parked it in the middle of the road and brought the safety car out. 
Um, just absolutely bloody useless. <laughs> I'm sorry, his, yeah. his driving has now got no redeeming qualities. He had an all right qualifying. Did he have an all right qualifying or did other people have a shit qualifying and it sort of let him progress at their expense? Well, I mean, don't, don't forget on um, on occasional Alpine and Checo's current form, you know, there's there's only two people guaranteed to go out in uh, This is it, like, I mean, Hulkenberg went out in Q1, sometimes gets through to Q3. Perez goes out in Q1, really should be getting through to Q3. There are at least two cars there that Sergeant should probably be behind. Mm. Yep. And there are also some Saubers and Alpines. Yeah, they, that, that's a variable thing, isn't it? That, that, that's less shocking. But yeah, I think it was. I think he, his qualifying was more other people's shit show than any sort of skill on his part. Yeah, uh, Albon has out qualified. Logan thirty to nothing. Mm-hmm. Perez has outqualified Logan twenty four to six. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Um, wasn't that the seventh? No, because I thought the um, that might be yeah. Perez has outqualified Logan. Yeah, Perez has outqualified uh, has been outqualified by Logan six times before the race. Um, mm. But yeah, just utterly, utterly pointless. Um, <laughs> Alban, on the other hand. He was he was having a great race. The um, the car is looking better. Yeah. Um, he's you know it's they're doing each other justice. Mm. He was sort of on the cusp of points, wasn't he? At the point I think at which he got signed. I think he was. Uh, I think he was ninth. He was in that region. Yeah. Mm. It, well, he did the insane double overtake mm. on Ricardo, which was that was great. Mm-hmm. It's just brilliant. Yeah. I think the, the the best thing about that was as well is you, um, when when it first cut to it, I kind of thought that he'd done one overtake, and was, like, essentially put in no other position but to like to go on the inside and do it like it was kind of a one meaningful overtake, another accidental overtake. Mm. But when you saw the onboard of both of them, it was a clear calculated move to overtake both of them, like at the same time yeah the perfect gap opened and yeah had he misjudged it a foot either side he's hit in one of those cars yeah but he got mm. plum i i still say i've said said for a while since he's come back into formula one i i genuinely believe he can be a, he can be a sleeping world champion mm. yeah he, he just needs the right the right conditions and the right place to end up mm. Yeah, it's, it's just a shame that Red Bull put him through the meat grinder before he was ready. And just piled the pressure on him constantly when uh, when he was there. I think I think Verstappen might just be a driver breaker as well. Mm. It's that, it, and I mean, you can see he, he's done it to Perez. Like, mm. look how how excited we were at first when Perez went to Red Bull, mm. and. Every year he spent, and I don't think there's any fault of Max Verstappen. It's just because he's relentless. Alonso is the same way. You know, Alonso's had a, a, a whole host of teammates that couldn't stack up to be in his teammate. Um, I think it's just when you've, when, you, when you're trying to beat your teammate and it doesn't matter what you do, the guy next year doesn't have an off day and he's quicker than you anyway, you just, you're just battered. Week week after week after week, mm. the Perez in twenty twenty one wasn't bad at all. He was that third person or that fourth person if Bottas was up there. Mm-hmm. He was in a very good position. The car was a bit more level between them and Mercedes, but he was a the decent number two that they probably wanted. Yeah, um, and probably the best thing he's ever done for Max Verstappen was halfway through Abu Dhabi twenty twenty one. Where he decided to back Lewis up in the final sector to tune about what eight nine seconds or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. Something massive like that. I mean, yeah, that's when he was being the perfect number two driver. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what Max said over the radio at the time, wasn't it? Oh, Checo's a legend or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. Um, now can't even beat Logan Sargent, <laughs> who is essentially somehow a poor man's Nicholas Latifi, <laughs> but not that poor, according to the uncle's wealth. <laughs> yes. Then again, Latifi's daddy's he's worth a he's worth a bob orb. Oh, this is several, true. Several this is true. Million. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where on the crapometer are we putting Logan compared to what we had now at Williams? Scott Speed. Ooh, Scott Speed wasn't a Williams, was it? I feel like Sergei no. Sorokin for me is Sorokin. like the bottom of the Williams. Yeah. Um, Jean Christophe so. Bouillon. Or John Soup. <laughs> Interesting. John Soup. <laughs> Uh, was Nakajima in, or was he? Well, Kazuki Nakajima was in, wasn't he? Not mm. Satoru. Um, um, yeah, didn't Kazuki Nakajima run over half his pit crew in his first race? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> strike. <laughs> uh, um, who do you think you are? I am. Um, <laughs> sorry, back to last time. Um, yeah, I, I he's okay, so I. I don't oh know yeah, the um, the the, the um, y- Yawley American city that that bowling tournament was in was actually Las Vegas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Brian for pointing that one out. <laughs> and thank you to someone on Discord who pointed out the I think you should leave sketch that takes a Mickey out of it, which is also very funny. <laughs> um, yeah, the um, is is he better than the Tifi? I mean, none of this matters, does it? We, it's, this is just slander Logan section. But... I mean, Latifi once got lost on a track. <laughs> oh, but Kimmy did that. Yeah, but that's Kimmy. You can kind of forgive that. Latifi did not bring the positives of Kimmy to offset the getting lost incident. <laughs> At least Kimmy was already off as well. <laughs> Latifi was on the track when he went, here's the road. Yeah, <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's a runoff area. Where am I? Why am I? Oh god, I forgot how good that was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, nobody's called him Low Goat yet, but Goatifi is a thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that that says to me Latifi is slightly less worse. No, yes. I think it means his name just lends itself better. <laughs> yeah. As, as soon as somebody as somebody with any sort of clout starts calling them slogan, it's done. <laughs> oh, oh, I was I was going for low speed. <laughs> <laughs> I the shit writes itself. <laughs> um, enough for slagging him off. Let's let's carry on bigging up Alban. Um, he was doing great until he got sciced. Mm. Yeah, and I mean normal rules for when you're coming across a spinning driver is aim for where they are because when you get there, that's where they aren't. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he didn't have room. He did. No. He did try and avoid him, but um, science kept rolling backwards and just took half his car off. Yeah, similar to Hulkenberg and Perez in that sense. Yeah, mm. at Monaco. Yeah, yeah, when Hulk was Hulk was the passenger there, Albon was the uh, was the passenger this time. Yeah, you know, I felt gutted for him because he was having a fantastic race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, science so desperate to get into the Williams, he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, where do we go next? I mean, we had, uh, what did we have? We ended up with five five DNFs. Jeez. Will it be Ferrari? They had double DNF. It will be Ferrari. Um, yeah, Leclerc and Sainz, both DNF. Leclerc was having engine problems. And tyre problems. And general Every other problems. Kind of problem. they, had, they had to reboot the car in the pits. Yes. Um, they had HP support on the phone telling them to do that. <laughs> I mean, the, have you noticed since they partnered with HP, the, um, the sort of, all the systems have just gone to crap? <laughs> I can't say it's something I had noticed, but we can keep an eye on it. Mm. Now, well, there was no systems to go to crap at Monaco because it was just 76 laps on a hard tyre. Go, go, yeah. go, wasn't mm, it? Yeah. Well, no, go. The other two girls were a little bit pointless because you can't really go that fast yeah um but yeah both ferraris out in q2 yes <laughs> um what are you laughing out q i just <laughs> laughing at something we can... i mean <laughs> i'm not laughing at the general misfortune of ferrari because i don't mind them so much right now everybody but... else is laughing at the general I, misfortune say, i just of ferrari. assumed you were laughing at the general misfortune of ferrari <laughs> One of the great things about when something bad happens to Leclerc mainly is that um, Matt and Tommy of XF uh, WTF1 now have P1 and they Twitch stream themselves watching the race in their houses. And whenever something bad happens to Leclerc, everyone jumps onto the Twitch stream 
and their number goes up from like seven thousand to twenty two thousand. And you sit there going, "Oh, hello, hi, you sarcastic fucks." <laughs> the, uh, Enjoying my tears. <laughs> Matt's P one face turn is one of the greatest face turns of all time. It's it's gone from like me, seeing him on television and me wanting to throw something through it to them pretty much being my favourite uh, F1 like commentator people. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Wow. <laughs> this show took a nose dive about six, seven months ago. In football terms, oh. I think Lee's just put in a transfer request. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the window's open. Leave via it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Ferrari just generally sucked. I think Sainz was, um, I think he was running about sort of sixth. Or, got him up, got himself up to about sixth or seventh by that point um, when he. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he was much ahead of um, Albon. Mm. Um, interestingly, he spun out on the same corner that Sergeant had his um, first issue with, and the track's not long been resurfaced. So I just wonder if that particular section of track is just a little bit slipperier. There did seem to be some suggestion, didn't it, that the the drainage on the new surface was not great. Judging by the amount of standing water that they were, um, well, trying to blow away with leaf blowers at Uh one point. There's a guy guy on one side of a puddle with a leaf blower and somebody on the other side with a broom. It, It looked like a Vic Reeves sketch. Yeah, and let's face it, if ever you've had to go and like move water or pick water up, when was the last time you thought of only had a, like a sweeping brush or a leaf blower? Yeah, the leaf the leaf blower did not look effective at all no. with what they were doing with it. They were not. just moving it and then it came back when they stopped <laughs> leaf blowing it. I think I think they're trying to blow it uphill slightly as well. Um but yeah, I it could it could have been an issue with the, with the track, but he stacked it. Um Leclerc's car fell apart. Sainz's car. Well, no, Leclerc's car fell apart. Oh, that's no, why, see, that's why they retired. Separate, separate to yes, sorry. Yeah, I mean, Sainz managed to get another couple couple of laps out, but they ended up um, they ended up retiring him. Mm-hmm. So I think he got damage mm. from where yes. he hit Alban. Um, and I enjoyed Sainz going round. His uh, oh god, I've spun out. Right, let's get this back in the right position. <laughs> Too far. Yes. Right, let's try that he again. He did not do good pirouette on the grass. No. Yeah, wet grass, not the best surface for donuts. No. All right, first week of the Magic Man Challenge. I have been absolutely shattered recently. Um, I've gone through a lot in my personal life away from uh, away from the podcast, um, and it's been the busiest time of the year for me with. Um, stuff with the band and um because it's tt so there's plenty of uh, plenty of gigs to play plenty of socializing to do and i needed i needed something to get me through and give me a bit of a boost and i found this stuff called magic mind it's really good um i mean they make they make the claims you know it gives you um gives you focus increases your energy and you know what i've actually found out that really is the case i've been having a shot of it every morning for about the last uh, about the last week and it's called a mental performance shot and i can see why they get that name because i've actually felt a lot more focused a lot more energetic um it's been um it's been about like i said about seven days since i started trying it and i'm really beginning to see the benefits i'm always skeptical of things that say oh, we'll give oh, this will give you energy and what it usually is is um things that pack full of caffeine and taurine and you just end up um, overtired and you can't sleep. This isn't the case because it's completely caffeine-free. You can carry on drinking coffee, which, trust me, I still do. Uh, my day job's in IT, so you need coffee to survive. But it also takes takes away the big caffeine crash after sort of over-caffeinating yourself and over-stimulating yourself. And I've tend to, tend to found, tended to find that I'm not... Uh, I'm, I don't need as much coffee to keep me uh, keep me awake and focused and um, and going. Um, they approached us um, a few weeks back and said, um, you know, give it a try. I'm like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll try some. So they the sent us some samples and uh, I tried it, for, tried it for a week. And I'm really beginning to actually see the benefits of it. 
and um gonna gonna shout it out between uh, between the rest of the pod team as well so that um we can all uh, we can all see uh, see how it goes um as a company they're great people uh get on really well with them because i've been in touch while i've been uh, while i've been trying it and uh, they also donate five cents from every bottle to um us mental health charities good news is they don't just sell it in the us so for all our listeners in uh, Canada, the UK, and uh, just about every other country because they ship to sixty-five different ones. Um, you can you can get it from them. Um, they also offer a no-risk guarantee. So if you if it doesn't work for you uh, within a hundred days, they will refund you a hundred percent. We've got a limited offer that we've arranged with them that you can use now. It gets you up to forty percent off a your first subscription. Or if you just want to try it for once and see how it goes for you, you can get 20% off. And just use the code for wheels 20 and that's F-O-U-R, WHEELS20. So the numbers are letters this time. Um, or you can um, also get it at uh, magicmind.com slash four wheels. And again, that's F-O-U-R-W-H-E-E-L-S. Right, give it a go. Let's, let us know how you think. Where next? Um, Do we want to talk about Leclerc's weird tyre choice before we move on completely from Ferrari? I mean, that that was kind of the anti hass and going for the gamble for the dry weather tyres while it was still wet. I mean, Leclerc is probably second only to Stroll in people I would probably not want to be on a slick tyre too soon <laughs> on mm. a drying track. I, I do not think of him as a wet weather driver at all. So why, no, no. why they thought he would be the person to make it work is is beyond me. I mean, I think they worked it out pretty quickly when he was, what, 20, 22 seconds off the pace? Yeah, I think that was in one sector. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it was, it, I think he lost about 40 seconds on that I first I think it lap, was 40 he? seconds, yeah. I, I just can't understand how he ended up, like, in that position... Like, can you can you imagine at any moment if like there if they'd said the same thing to Carlos Sainz said, I'm "Gonna bring your in, stick on slicks, Carlos. Uh, any chance?" It just it wouldn't fly. Mm. It, it, it would have been questioned. He'd have said, "No, I don't. I don't think this is this is the right, the right move. It's too wet for it's too too wet for those tires." Um, and I, I, I don't I, see. I don't think it should go the other way, where sometimes it sounds it sounds like Lewis is constantly questioning like his. Uh, his pit, but mm-hmm. that, there has to be a, a happy middle ground where you're just, you, you know, you're, you're not just going along with like ridiculous, like it must have been, a, it has to have been a panicky. Yeah. Because um, I think like, he, he, s- he said yes, didn't he, because of the engine issue he was having. So he thought, well, we're not competitive anyway, so it doesn't matter. I mean, he was already fairly pissy when he asked how much time he was losing, got told lots, and then said, answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that. I thought, well, hang on a second. Yeah, I mean, lots is enough, isn't it? Yeah, it's like technically an answer. You know that William's overtaking you. <laughs> That's how much. Yeah, we're measuring it on a calendar at the minute. <laughs> it, it was. It was a day for pissy radio, though. Well, they were yeah. all wet, weren't they? They were all in a mood because they were damp. Huffy. Huffy. Yes. <laughs> um. So yeah, Ferrari, you sucked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, do you know what though? It's it, it's a proper uh, eye opener for the for for the team LH brigade that think the move to Ferrari is going to solve all the woes. <laughs> it, it might solve a couple of woes, mainly the Toto woes. I, yeah, like it might solve the baby. I think it's going to be hilarious, to be perfectly honest. I think you're going to have two drivers which are going to try and beat each other into retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking uh, the Toto Wars, weren't they? Like an early 50s rock and roll band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that one on your, um, on your soundboard either, judging by that. <laughs> um... Oh, ah, there we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> More complaints coming in on Twitter, no doubt. Right. Sorry. Um... Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Apologise. They're wrong, Kieran. You carry on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, you. You told me I wasn't allowed to do that when I suggested using uh, my soundboard for it. Yeah, I said you weren't allowed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at last, the power vacuum I've always dreamt of. <laughs> Uh, 
I know you, Paul. You'd have been like, you remember those old, uh, like five pound SNES controllers you used to get, and they'd all have a rapid fire button on them. <laughs> That's what it would have been like. <laughs> Little plastic things you buy in, like, I don't know, in TK Maxx in the queue. Yeah. <laughs> You just slide one of the things over, then you're trying to work out why Nathan can do like a uh, E Honda's hundred hand slap for two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, I, so, I don't have a soundboard, I just have a cat. Yeah, she's been purring all the way she's through. She's very this. active tonight, I do apologise. Yeah. Somebody, somebody suggested actually after the last show there should be uh, there should be a new game on here and like guess the timestamp when a cat gets oh, involved. Oh, she went early today. <laughs> uh, right, Sauber. Um, apparently, they participated. <laughs> yeah. What did they do? Can thirteenth and fifteenth, fifteenth being God. the last runner. I don't remember them at all. <laughs> I think the only time that Bottas got mentioned on our chat during the race was when um, Flood mentioned Windows 95 Man from yes, Eurovision. Yes, And I said he looked like Bottas. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I can remember about Sauber. Mm. Bottas overtook somebody. <laughs> <laughs> was it Sergeant? Uh, no, it was Yuki oh. when he had that spin. Oh. Oh, I'd be yeah. like Yuki <laughs> Guan Yu Zhou had a shitty pit stop, didn't he? That still seems to be a, a sound oh, thing. Oh, yes. Yeah, he was a lap down, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah, I mean, they said it's going to take until probably Belgium or even Holland Why? to sort out the pit stop problems. <laughs> this is not something that should need sorting out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to go back to this. Did you see who won the fastest pit stop award of the weekend? No. It was Leclerc going back from hards to inters. <laughs> <laughs> And it came up on F1 Twitter earlier going, the, a, a wonderful return to glory for Ferrari with the fastest <laughs> pit stop. Oh, every comment underneath was, yeah, I bet they're fucking thrilled with that. <laughs> Cheers for that. So we had the fastest and the slowest stops during the race. <laughs> Not if Joe gets his way. <laughs> um, yeah, I... The longer this season goes on, the less point I'm seeing in Sauber, and I think the less point they're seeing in actually doing anything. Yeah. I, I want to know what the Audi side is thinking of. Um, Close your eyes, stick your fingers in your ears, and wish for next season. <laughs> well, I mean, what is it two years, 26, of it? is Audi coming in? Um, yeah. I mean, Audi are starting to move people in from next season including yeah but that's from as as of 2026 as of 2026 it'll be full it'll be fully audi it'll be half audi next year so it'll be out (laughs) (laughs) um and at the moment they're just d Mm. i mean their grand plan at the moment appears to be hope hulkenberg think fixes everything which seems a bold move (laughs) <laughs> that sounds like a neater driver's next book. <laughs> what a strange position, though. Where like it looks like Carlos Sainz is going to go to Williams over, like, and it, you know, it's it's not like it's a long time away that Audi's going to come in. Mm. You know, it's it's two seasons. He's essentially got if he was to move there next year, he's got one season with Salba before it becomes Audi. And it's still looking like he's going to pick Williams. I suppose yeah. Williams are making progress, aren't they? Like you can see that they are actually doing something, whereas Audi mm. is a sort of empty promise of the future that may or may not come to fruition. Yeah, well, we'll have to try and see if we can get Scarbs to get come mm. back on because I'd love to speak to somebody that's sort of in the know and like in the paddock stuff. Because whenever you hear someone talk about um, Williams. They seem to be talking about the fact that Williams are going to come together like it's a foregone conclusion, yeah. like they, you know, like the like the pe- the paddock people know something we don't. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I can only think that it's the infrastructure that, um, oh, what's your man's name? The new technical director from from Mercedes, Andrew Shovelin. Is oh, it yeah. Andrew Shovelin? Oh, yeah. mm, that's a yeah. person, yeah. Yeah, um, is 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 it him that's t- that's took over as principal? No, it's James Vowles. James Vowles. Right. James Vowles. Sorry, that's who I was thinking of. 
Uh, I can only think that it's whatever whatever he's put in place. Um, it's it, it, even if Williams don't become like a, a a contender for the podium and wins, he he's put enough in where it's just a foregone conclusion that everything is in place for them to move forward. Well, I think now they've got the uh, now they're a lot more financially sorted, and mm. they're getting the right people in, um, ones who don't admit that building a Formula One car is very difficult these days. <laughs> yes. Um, no, ha- hang on. Let's say this was not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will take that to the grave. Like the uh, he the, he didn't stop being able to be like competent at his job, like overnight. That that was like a a Williams at that time problem. Yeah, I mean the you know Ferrari get the uh, success bonus, and Williams at the time had the success penalty of you've done that well in the past. We're going to make it look like you're towing a caravan at every race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Sauber this season, I've got a full bloody eighteen wheel trailer on the back. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I think I think the Williams pro- problem was, and it's it's not to bag on Claire Williams, although it's pretty easy. But you're gonna. Um, I th- well, I just think it was the um, the Williams project of a person called Williams must be in charge of the Williams team mm. went on maybe two seasons too long. Yeah, mm. I agree with that. I'd argue it probably shouldn't have started in the first place. Um, yeah, I, I I mean, I could have said that, Kieran, but I was trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah. Without stating the bleeding obvious. Um, <laughs> there's that old Peter Windsor uh, thing, isn't there, about they picked the wrong brother. The brother was uh, the wrong child. The brother was managing... No, I no, thought. no, you carry on with that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> they picked the wrong Williams. Um, <laughs> what's Venus Williams doing here? Um, I'm, I'm with you. I'll, I'll back the first comment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Venus Williams would probably get the job done, to be honest. I mean, I, I wouldn't mess with Venus. No. No. She'd probably um, throw the cars further than they would have gone back then. <laughs> <laughs> and if it had been Serena, um, the Instagram would have got very creepy very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Is she the one that had the weird thing with the bloke from Reddit? Yeah, they're they're still they're still a thing. Oh, um, they have two children. No, the no the weird thing about Serena Williams' Instagram was her child's doll's her ch- yes. Instagram account. That yes. was it. Yes, that was the one. Kai Kai, I think the doll is called. Mm, God, it's, it's like I brave. It. It's fucking brave position that Paul coming from a person with a Instagram for his mother's cat. <laughs> Can I just point out, it's not actually my mum's cat. It, it, just, it just moved in. <laughs> the fucking the, the, the doll didn't just turn up at your mum's house. That would be weird. If, if at that point your mum went, there's an Instagram in this, then it would be strange. <laughs> no, the reason the reason for that Instagram account is my mum said, don't you dare put anything from this cat on social media. <laughs> Lee, you'd have done the it's, same. It's very privacy conscious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he spends all his time hiding in a box. Anyway, um, moving on to finishing slagging off Sauber. Um, yeah, you can't really slag yeah. them off because you, you'd have to notice them to pull apart the faults. Nothing mm. happened. Yeah. Um, Hass next, and that was a gamble that could have worked if it had carried on raining. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You forget that they were actually on their way to lead the race at one mm. point until the rain stopped. It was yeah. yeah I until... ad- I admire the effort on their part there. It just yet yeah, the timing for the the switch just didn't quite I th- fall for. I them. think it. I think it was one of the one of those situations where they had nothing to lose by it yeah. because they were both outside the top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, no. K Mag qualified top ten, didn't they? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think K Mag was okay though for a bit, wasn't he? Oh no, even, K- even sorry, K Mag was fourteenth and Hulk was out in Q one. Mm. But wasn't K Mag okay for a little bit on that strategy? Then they gave him a pit stop, which took about three and a half weeks. Something he, he came in, yeah. They something didn't have did, tires yeah. ready yeah. for him. Yeah, he, he uh, did come in I, first. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think he would be. He wouldn't be in the dizzy heights he was because he just had so much pace over the others at the beginning of the race. Mm. But he he'd have still come up well, out well into the points when it all shook out. Yeah, yeah. It's the um, the crossover point was a little bit too early, and so when Haas found out that Alpine were going quicker than them on dry tires, it was like oh, mm. shit. Yeah, this, this hasn't worked. Yeah. Um, it would have been great if it had. Um, but yeah, they had nothing to lose because it didn't look like they were going to be on for points this week. Unless something completely bizarre happened. And it damn near did. Mm-hmm. I mean, as much as I like Gunter Steiner, I can take Haas more seriously as a team now that he's gone because they're actually making racing decisions, not... Yeah. Pub- I've said this decisions. for ages. I, I hate agreeing with you. You know <laughs> this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, right, Lee, you've got a point. Oh, yeah, oh, I feel dirty. <laughs> it's isn't it weird that like to run a fully fledged Formula One t- uh, team, you need to be more than a meme. <laughs> I suppose it sort of almost comes back to the Claire Williams thing, doesn't it? And that you can't have someone who is in charge who is almost sort of bigger than the team itself yeah yes yeah, so if if you are leaving a race and you say well four days until Imla, you're up to much guns for this week uh book sign out waterstones piccadilly at 12 <laughs> then foils at <laughs> two meet and greet at four mm. and i'm on sunday brunch mm. yeah, so, uh, where does he fit in the ikea photo shoot yes in the little <laughs> boat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it could just be the fact, like, I mean, he's always said that his job, most of his job was trying to get um, Haas to put his hand in his pocket mm. to help back the team. Mm. So yeah. maybe just didn't like, um, maybe Gene Haas just didn't like Gunther Steiner. Too many doors and, went through too many doors. Yeah, because this, this guy's come in and he seems to be getting money out of Gene Haas. So maybe it's just one of those situations. You, you know, sometimes you get that person... And it doesn't matter what they ask you; you find it irritating because who of who they mm-hmm. are. I yep. wonder if it's a situation like, "Hang on, that that felt personal." <laughs> I wasn't uh, meant to be. <laughs> 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 yeah, the conversation usually starts with me computers acting up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not even come in because um, he was part of the team. Mm. I think he was head of engineering last year, wasn't he? I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Gene Haas has announced that the NASCAR team is folding at the end of the season. Yeah, nice. that's, that's something, isn't it? Mm. Is that retirement planning? Um, Mario Andretti hopes so. <laughs> yeah. He's got a to teams at this rate. <laughs> it could have been the new Red Bull. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, if um, I mean what what they've said with uh, the NASCAR team is Gene is spending more time concentrating on F one, and Tony Stewart's um, doing um, NHRA um, dragsters. Oh. What's NHRA? Well, Na- dragsters. I yeah, mean. National Hot Rod Association. I think. Uh, if I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. Or if I'm right, somebody please say thank God Paul got a, a some initials yeah, right. Yeah, it, it is literally like sort of. Yeah, just drive as fast as you can, and then a parachute farts out the end of your car. Unless it's on fire. Yes. Or sometimes the parachute's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> or it's upside down. Yeah. In a field in Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eskrick. Oh, is that where it was? Yeah, just outside York. It's where oh, I grew sorry. up. I'm, where I grew oh, up, I'm touching okay. about that. Um... I've lost North Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> I've gained West Yorkshire, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> You've alienated my people. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, Haas, great attempt at a gamble. Um, damn near paid off, 11th and 12th. And let's face it, if you're running 11th and 12th behind two Alpines, there's a damn good mm. chance that you'll gain at least one position. Mm. Yeah, they, were, yeah. they were on their best behaviour. Um, oh, on they... their best behaviour on track, not necessarily well, yes. on the radio. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do Alpine next because mm. um, yeah, Ocon was uh, a little bit pissy. I mean, when isn't he? 
Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, he got he got told to let Pierre past him um, so he could chase Ricardo and basically told the team, forget it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's leaving. What are they going to do? Mm. Do you think he was actually expecting a, don't worry, we'll, if he doesn't get through past him, then by the last corner, we'll let you back in? Um, he probably was. I mean, that is, that's the way that a lot of teams work it, mm. but... Yeah. Um... And, and with the, the very few points they're going to score this year, I imagine it's now extremely personal for Ocon to beat Gasly. Yeah. So he can walk out and say, well, I beat him. Mm. Yeah. Because they've got, what, four or five points now? Five points? So it's three to Gasly, two to Ocon, I want to say. You're making me look things up here. Oh, sorry. Um... Yes, yes. Yep, they are on on five points. Yeah. Um... I wonder if he'll get a seat. I mean, there aren't... Aside from Antonelli, there aren't a huge number of not currently on the grid drivers being talked about. Lawson's the only other one is replacing him, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Lawson's going to be replacing Danny That's Rick. true. That's true, Lawson. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Ocon and Ricardo are the um, two drivers who are most at risk of not being around next year, and I think we'll possibly add K-Mag into that list as well. Mm. I think K-Mag will stay um, a has. So, Rachel, Christ, I've forgotten her surname. Brooks. Thank you. Rachel Brooks uh, seemed to suggest at the weekend that Haas and Ocon have signed a deal. But last week, Bottas was going to Haas if he wasn't going to mm. Williams. And who's who's Rachel Brooks? Is she the, um... the blonde, She's not the blonde one thinking. on Sky? She's the one that doesn't want to do Lando. <laughs> Publicly. <Right. laughs> so, oh, is, is, is she the like is she the one that's 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 really, really tall and really, really British or really, really tall and really, really posh? She's not, not the, the one you're thinking one. of it. Oh, right. I'm Rosanna Tennant. Rosanna yeah, Tennant. that's who I was thinking of. Sorry. Okay. Uh, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop out of this and drop back in because you guys keep cutting out for me and ah. it's doing my tiny little mind in. So <laughs> Yeah, I'll be two seconds. Right, we'll slag him um, off. We'll slag him off while he's not. This is here. a technical pit stop. <coughs> yeah, it is. He's going to Ferrari it up. Oh, is he still here? He is still here. <laughs> <laughs> it has started like a Ferrari pit stop. <laughs> right, he's, um, got, he's gone now. We can definitely talk yeah. about him. Um, yeah, what was it about? Uh, I, he, I said to Jane at the weekend when Rachel Brooks was interviewing Lando on the way to the grid, but it, it, she. She, he doesn't look at her the way he looks at naughty Auntie Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> what was it she was saying? She, she was um, she did a session of comms, didn't she, for um, for Sky? And I think she was, was she saying Fernando won't speak to her before the race because the last time he spoke to her before the race, he had a bad race, so he's decided she's unlucky. Oh, didn't seem as superstitious. <laughs> yes. Wow. So yeah, she, apparently she is the one person he will not speak to before a race because whenever he speaks to her, he has a bad race. Maybe he just doesn't like her. Yeah, he's, he's a, happy to speak to her after the race. Won't speak to her before it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that's when he's confined to a pen. He can't yeah. run anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, she was she was doing all the pretty race interviews while he was at McLaren. Mm. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can't blame so Rachel that, Brooks for your F two engine. <laughs> that, that's a deep rooted fucking trauma, then. <laughs> but yeah, we got we got an entire race without Alpine trying to um, trying to physically take each other out. They weren't racing hard against each other, even though they only finished something like three tenths apart. Mm. Um, Gasly overtook Perez at one point, and it's a cracker. And I don't think it was caught on camera. I only saw a replay on Twitter today, I think. Was this so, while Perez still had an entire car? Or... Well, it no, was he didn't was, have an yeah. entire car for the whole race, did he? Because he and, he and oh, Gasly yeah. had a, a thing at the start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. maybe Alpine is sort of concentrating on um, take out the competition rather than take out each maybe, other. Maybe, maybe. Mm, yeah. That, that would work. Um, RB, 
Uh, UK in 14th, Danny in 8th. They got um, they got told they were allowed to race each other at the end, and Yuki promptly spam. <laughs> in excitement. <laughs> <laughs> A great way to celebrate the new contract. Yes. <laughs> you can race. Yay! Oh, fuck! <laughs> he, yeah, there was a proper sort of like code brown for Magnussen with that, wasn't there? Because he, he yeah. spam and then came back onto the track right in front because there was a big train. There was a big DRS train. And yeah, Magnussen j- just just avoided him. Yeah, they're both lucky, I think. Mm. To know that you don't want to be hit at that angle. No, no, that's terrifying. So, um, lucky, lucky boys. Yeah, and um, Danny going all out to um, give Jacques Villeneuve uh, the up yours and tell him, you know, things things that he shouldn't have um, quoted. Literally, don't say it, baby. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Um, yeah, what is it? He's um, he doesn't. I think was it Villeneuve said about Ricardo. He doesn't know why he's still in F one. He thinks it's only his image and his his popularity that's kept him there. And in the same breath, he also said Stroll is only a racing driver because his dad wanted to be a racing driver and failed. So he's living through his son. His son's basically a prisoner. Was I think the gist of <laughs> his, his son's being held captive by his dad. Bearing in mind that every Lawrence, logic. bearing in mind every Lawrence Stroll media appearance, does he look, looks like he's being held captive. Nappy. Yeah, no, he was dropping <laughs> yes. bombs. To be fair to Villeneuve, he was. He did not hold back. Uh, I yeah, I, I was about to slag off Jack Villeneuve. Then you said that last thing, and now I'm back on board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack had a lot to say this weekend, baby. <laughs> uh, I, I think, I think also Jack seems to have forgotten uh, his career. After the Blue Williams, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's the thing. He's not going to be exactly one to say somebody's outstayed their welcome in F one. Mm-hmm. He no. scored about two points in his last seven seasons in Formula One, <laughs> yeah, whilst being paid seventeen billion dollars a season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was the Red Williams, mm-hmm. the BAR, which him and Craig Pollock claimed they were going to take pole and a win in their first race with. Without a Mecha Chrome engine in there, um, they DNF'd with their Mecha Chrome engine in Australia in their first race and didn't score a point all season. Um, Was that what did, did Jack's rear wing fall off? Yes. That's why I always think that straight oh, at Albert Park, I always call it the Villeneuve straight, because that's where his rear wing dropped off and he went to the corner and took it backwards. Mm. I do love that car, though. Like uh, the the zipper like car, the, the zip up. Yeah, I think it looked mm. great, and I, I I I will I'll stand by. They were ahead of the curve, um, with their advertising, and I think they should have been allowed at the time to bring two different cars on in with two different liveries because that would have opened the door to teams, um, taking like, uh like feature sponsors on mm. for drivers mm. like so like yeah so ricardo could be in the fucking veggie mike red bull and um <laughs> you know the, it just opens another door for, for to try and get money into teams when nowadays they could really do with that sort of thing yeah uh, i mean indycar it, it does get a little bit confusing when all the teams are in different liveries mclaren are actually sticking sticking with the single livery idea for all the cars they're all slightly mm. different but yeah but you they're, can, they're, you can, they're on a color theme you can tell it's mclaren mm. the thing with um penske and chip ganassi is every, you've got to know the numbers you've got yeah, to know team ev- numbers. every car looks di- you know every car's got a different livery and it doesn't help with indycar being a spec series so every car mm. looks 100 percent identical McLaren's biggest selling point sponsorship wise is their brand, isn't it? The mm. yellow, the, the papaya. Yellow, orange and black. Yeah, papaya. papaya. So that <laughs> makes sense. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't, that's, that's a very man thing, isn't it? Color is this. <laughs> I'm used to. No, that's why no one calls Trump that papaya bloke over there. <laughs> <laughs> When, as everybody um, knows, he said, don't call me orange. I'm peach. Did he? That's the joke. In peach, oh, I'm, God, pe- I'm, oh. Oh. I'm peach. Oh, God. You peach. deserve more there, Paul. Oh. You deserve more. <laughs> oh. 
Some, I, something now went bloody hell. That's not bad from Trump. <laughs> Somebody pointed it out on Discord. I think it was Rossi. He says, for some reason, the Canadian Grand Prix week every year is when my jokes actually land. The other 51 <laughs> weeks, I don't have a hope. It's, it's just <laughs> it's just around Canada. I get I get the jokes. <laughs> Should have brought this in at the beginning of the podcast. Could we just, for a split second, break off from doing our team and driver review and ask, what the fuck was going on with that national anthem? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the Damien Lewis Canadian version. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys! You that... fucking yeah! You had the chance to get rid of Trudeau, and look where it's led you to. I think I like, might have gone for my oh. pre-race piss during the anthem. Oh, you've it, like it, it is like the fucking like satanic version of the Tally Tubbies. Is it? Is it on a scale with like the Damien Lewis? anthem from the british grand prix last year it was up there with fergie at the nba all-star ooh, game ooh, okay i will i will research that post poll i think it, it's a new level i think they set a new level i mean i i, I only sort of caught a little bit of it because i was i was grabbing a grab, grabbing a drink from the kitchen uh was the guy dressed as mario excellent no, i hope so he was dressed as a cunt <laughs> <laughs> he was he, he he had a little bit too much dungaree on. But did, did yeah. he have no, no, Would you no. have preferred he was he wearing have... less then, Kieran? He didn't have enough dungaree on. He had like two sizes too little dungaree on. Didn't didn't it have the red like red British Red Cross logo on it? Or am I thinking of something else? No, he had a he had a, he had a leaf on it. He had a uh, maple oh, leaf. On it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. It was the worst thing. The worst thing I've ever seen with my I, eyes. I. Th- I don't think it was massively in tune. No, no, no. There was nothing, nothing right about it. Nothing right about it. the guitar wasn't plugged in for a start. Guitar was, that yeah, that was, that was a prop. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, it lo- what they looked like, they looked like sort of bit parts in a Foo Fighters video. <laughs> Um, if we didn't already yeah, have a title for this week's episode, that would have been it. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do, if if because I'm going to say if as if it's sold, it hasn't fucking sold, definitely not. But if da- if I well I'm on the Isle of Wight at the weekend, I'm going to pick up um, the seven inch of Damien Lewis's band that I found in Ventnor Exchange, the record shop on the Isle of Wight, and we'll give it away as a prize for something on the show. <laughs> Obviously the booby prize, so it's going to be the slowest time when we bring back Formula Lee. That's First still- person <laughs> to bring me the head of the Canadian anthem people. <laughs> I was preface as well, this was a joke, because the internet is fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your browsing history. <laughs> Not saying I'm upset, I'm just saying there won't be a prize. <laughs> You're very, very invested in this Dungaree Man, aren't you, Lee? I mean, <laughs> Dungaree Dun- Man has was apparently um, just been the opening act on tour with Shania Twain. Oh, God. Who... I can't imagine anything worse than that whole combination. <laughs> Shania Twain, who, as we've said before, had uh, took part in the most Canadian thing ever. During the Grey Cup final, which is Canada's Super Bowl, she got dog sledded onto the stage in the middle of the um, arena in a snowstorm, surrounded by Mounties. <laughs> it was a look, to be fair to her. How are you defining dog sledded? You know, the <laughs> Iditarod, Huskies, I'm, mush, I'm, mush. I'm just not the, typing it into Urban the, Dictionary. The, 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 mode, the actual mode heard. of transport. I have never heard anything that sounds more like a euphemism. <laughs> Dogsledded Urban Dictionary. I'm going to have to get the big. No, nope, can't out. say that out loud. Please do. What next? next I've already, dro- I've already dropped the C. You can say it. I, 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 I tell you what. This is what dog sledding is. If anything, it this means... is the most appropriate podcast. If we have to break out some Jack, we have to break out some Jack. Yeah, it's when you and your girlfriend are. Hey, oh, I didn't have the thing up. Shit. Oh, you <laughs> fuck. Blew it. Wanky. Oh, really? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I missed that because I was talking. Yeah. What, what do you believe? What? <laughs> what did you say? Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. It's, so when you and when when your girlfriend and you're in bed and don't say it, baby, and she has to go to the loo after. 
<laughs> oh, I still don't know what we mean. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, Paul, cut this out. Don't say it, baby. Because you know it's just not true. And you yell, mush, mush. <laughs> Do not edit that out. <laughs> Never, never, never. <laughs> that out. If, if anything, I say find find all of the frequencies and boost them <laughs> just for that bit. You can order their definitions on like a like a mug. Father's Day's coming. That's, that's clearly that's clearly a gift for Lee. So if anyone wants to buy Lee a gift. <laughs> Oh god! I thought Take I was putting I, I thought I was the, putting uh... a marker on the track, and I hit stop, and I lost about ten seconds. Oh. <laughs> oh. Are we back? Are oh. we good? Are we good? We're like... good oh, sorry, we're... sorry about that. I just I thought we were just going to slag off the guy the uh, in the dungarees. I, t- I didn't it went so that much better. It went so much better than we were expecting. <laughs> How the hell did we get from Danny Rick and Jack Villeneuve to this? The, via the dungarees. Hey, what? It brings a whole new meaning to the word sausage dog, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Delete internet history. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So Danny had his best qualifying of the year in a Grand Prix, mm-hmm. and um, got points and everything, and looked like a real F one driver. Yes. Mm. I think they'll, he's going to keep his seat for next year, you know. What are they, what are they going to do with Lawson, though? Because Sell him. They can sell him to someone. Mm. No, is he going to get lying. Is he going to get linked with Haas? Yeah, it could They're, be Haas, every, could be Sauber. Everybody else mm. is driving for mm-hmm. Haas. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for them to make me an offer. Yeah. I, I, do you think that Lawson's issue might, might be not his? I think I've said this before, haven't I? But it's it's his issue might also be Sonoda. Not Sonoda. Um, De Vries. Because like, they had a couple of good results from De Vries, and then they went all in on him, and they were wrong. Well, I see yeah. what you mean, yeah. yeah sort of... De Vries had one good result in a mm. different car. Mm. Yes. Yeah, they're sort of a bit wary of kind of over... The thing, the thing is, though, I mean, they've, they've sort of grown Lawson from a sapling, mm. whereas mm. De Vries, they just brought, uh, they just bought him in because, I mean, he was he was Merce- there. he was Mercedes reserve driver for about five years. Yes, mm. you know, he was he was splitting um, he was splitting Mercedes reserve duties with Gutierrez. Yeah, he's in that episode of um, Tuned. Tuned, remember Tuned? Mm, yeah, Aaron, yeah, he's in that. Brought him back from the void, which is Formula E. I, I think that has to be some sort of like satanic ritual. It's like like Babylon workings <laughs> to try and get them out of uh, out of there. Well, Tictum's there for life. I mean, all we've realised he, he's only like twenty two, isn't he? I thought he's older than that. Tictum, it was his birthday. I'm... It was his birthday on Friday. <laughs> Send him a card. Yeah. How about a mug? A mug from Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I must admit, I'd, I'd have put him slightly older than that. I thought it was... Uh, uh, he was 25. I was 25? Yeah. <clears throat> Look, looks like a two. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the the question for what's going to happen to Danny Rick next season is... Um, I mean, Jacques may have a point. I, I think the, th- the thing is, right, Danny Rick has spent has had a long career in Formula 1... And he spent more time at the absolute sharp end looking like a potential world champion than he has the ruined Daniel Ricciardo we've got we've got now. There's clearly something in Red Bull where they still believe that, that Danny Rick is inside him. And um, the, I don't know whether whether it's like simulator work they're doing, what, whatever it is. Uh, uh, but more important than that, there's clearly something going on inside Red Bull where they're pretty fucking worried about things because that's the only reason they can give Perez a two-year contract. So I, I feel this this that I don't know whether they think Verstappen's just going to up and leave them or 
uh, or something else is going to happen. But if if they've still got that that faith in Daniel Ricardo, I think they'll keep him because of the because of the fragile situation Red Bull's in. If it's falling apart at the seams, you don't want to start pulling seams apart yourself. Mm. Mm. I mean, yeah, okay. There's <clears throat> quite a few, you know, been a few high profile departures from Red Bull, Adrian Newey, of course, being being the biggest one, mm-hmm. and new regulations coming in in um, two years' time. Um, well, we didn't talk mm. about them launching the uh, render of the prototype of what they think the car might look yeah. like. So we'll look nothing like. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, it, at, the, at the moment, it looks like a twenty twelve McLaren. I love the I love the movable aero in in theory. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, front wing moving. I think is fantastic. The um, even even like the idea of having the, like, the two different like names for them. Obviously, they're going it's like X and is it Z X and Z or something? I can't Some, remember. What something the... something like that. And it's the yeah. um, and the manual override mode. Yeah, so, they need to change it to for, something Formula One-y, though. Like, you know, so the downforce version is like prime mode, and then the the low downforce one can be like slip mode or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. With manual override mode and the initials, I just want to hear it in the cool down rooms. How did you manage to overtake me like that, your mom? <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be funny in 2026 when they look, you know, the, the calves ride and they look back at Verenda and go, remember when they thought they didn't hover? <laughs> <laughs> um, tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll keep Lee happy. We'll talk about Aston Martin next. That was all right. Yeah. That was fine. <clears throat> Yeah. I, I must admit, I I had five five on Alonso to win that race because I thought he he seemed rapid in practice in the rain. Um, I thought, well, if that can go forward, he was sixty six to one as well. Mm. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried about where the pace in that car's gone. You know, in general. Mm. Yeah, it's now firmly fifth, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the pace now is kind of equal to what they were towards the end of last season. You know, they had, they flew out of the blocks at the start. And then, yeah. then everyone caught up with them, and it just seems like they've held station and let everyone get away since um, since the start of this year. Because you know, it's not the worst car on the grid. It's not the best car on the grid. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably the best of the midfield, isn't it? At some it's races, not... it seems yeah, to sort it's... of vary race to race, doesn't it? Mm. It's not mm. oh, like over. Yeah, yeah, because I suppose RB was kind of top of the midfield this weekend, wasn't it, for pace? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Big questions coming up about Stroll next year as well, because he's in a contract year. (laughs) Big. I I tried to say that with a straight face. (laughs) Maybe maybe that's where they can sell Liam Lawson to. They can sell him to to Lawrence personally. That would... I think they would only... I reckon Aston Martin would only get rid of Stroll now for the reanimated corpse of one Manuel Fangio. <laughs> <laughs> because, if they're, you know, oh, we've, we've got to take one to, one of these two drivers forward into 2026. They'll go, we'll take Stroll. But you've got <laughs> Fernando Alonso. And I said, we'll take Stroll. Interestingly enough, that's the same ceremony you have to do to get somebody out of Formula E. <laughs> <laughs> God, if Fangio ever turns up in Formula E, the world is finished. <laughs> I've been kidnapped all along again. Um, yeah, I mean, I've... you don't want. Go on, sorry, sorry. I'm just gonna say you, you don't want Fangio in Formula E because he'll be involved in one minor scrape, and all the Argentinian fans will jump onto it. Oh, yes, the whole um, Canapino thing. Who for anyone that follow, <clears throat> for anyone that follows IndyCar, um... mushroom ones are my favourite. Canapinos. Oh. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> I <Yeah>. apologise. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, God. So going, going back to where we were. Um, yeah, for anyone that follows IndyCar, um, Canapino and uh, Teo Pacher had the slightest of comings together in Detroit. I, I've seen the replay about three or four times and I can't remember it happening during the race. Then again, there was about 97 it, crashes. Is, this is the... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, this is the thing with Detroit. It was messy. Uh, no, Canapino. Can different Argentinian. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, and apparently there were death threats aimed at Teo Pacher. And this happened when Canapino and Callum Islet collided with each other a couple of times last year. Um... And Canapino appeared to like all the um, all the tweets about uh, what people were going to do to anyone that dare get within five feet of his car. So yeah. he's now he's now taken a break, hasn't he? he? He's so... having he's having a leave of absence. Yes. And uh, McLaren and Junkos Hollinger Racing had a technical partnership, which very suddenly got dissolved just before the weekend. Convenient, but. <laughs> and their their other driver is Grosjean, am yes, I right? Yes, their people? less their less dramatic driver is Grosjean. <laughs> <laughs> God, this guy's outdoing me, and I was literally on fire. <laughs> uh, right, where next? Uh, Mercedes, I would probably say next. Um, third and fourth. Good overtake. Robust overtake by George. On Piastri. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But George's best weekend of the year, even with yeah. a sprint win. Mm. Actually, no, he didn't win. Actually, Lewis's best weekend of the year as well. It's the first time he's finished in the top five all season. Wow. Yeah. Mm. He doesn't agree. He thinks it was awful, but it was, it was okay. It's one of those, he blew I it think, in qualifying. Yeah, I feel like if you'd have said to them at the start of the weekend, you can have third and fourth. Sorry, my throat is closing up, which is really helpful. Um... Yeah, if you said something at the start of the weekend, third and fourth, they'd have probably been like, yeah, we'll have that. But yeah, from where sort of obviously getting pole and sort of how the race panned out, I can kind of see why maybe they might have thought it, there was a missed opportunity in there. Hmm. Yeah, I hmm. mean, you know, George was leading for a while, mm-hmm. um, lost it at the first chic- It was the first chicane, wasn't it? And... Well, in the, in the pit stops, when they had the, the pit stop behind the safety car, he so nearly came out in front of Verstappen. Mm, and at that mm. point, that was it. Verstappen led. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the Mercedes had some pace towards the end, which is something that we've not seen a great deal of this season because they do tend to fall away a bit. Mm. And, um, I mean, you know, they're not, they're, not, they're not winning any titles this year. No. But... I think I think they more than participated this time mm. round. Mm. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And for the Mercedes fans, of which I'm sure there's a couple on the internet, not se- not seen them myself, but I've heard I've heard stories. Um, you know, it it gives you it gives you something to look forward to for the rest of the season. Mm. Are they going to go yeah. a whole year without a win, though? I think <sighs> it, I think it could happen. Yeah, Maybe. I agree. Oh, well, they didn't win last mm. season, did they? Mm-mm. No. No, the last one uh, was Brazil, wasn't it? 22. Yeah. The other thing to remember is the fact that Ferrari was inexplicably missing. Oh, yes. no, no, no well, you, you can explain why they were missing. Ferrari. Yeah, was, they, they were shocking. But <laughs> apart from that, but realistically, I, uh, we didn't expect that to happen, and I don't think it's mm. going to happen an awful lot. So it was great to have Mercedes up there, but I also wonder where they would have been there if there'd have been a mm. Ferraris in the mix as well. Fifth, fifth and fifth and sixth, if we'd have had good Ferraris. Yeah, mm. but yeah, it, it does yeah. feel like for, yeah for them to be challenging for a race, something needs to have gone amiss. Yeah, somewhere yeah. else. You know, it's, it's like the only reason that um, Trulli or Panis won a race. Mm. Stuff happened. <laughs> Or I, I Ocon don't or think... Gasly. Or Maldonado. Or Maldonado. He qualified on pole. Mm. <laughs> ah, but he... Well, he qualified second and Alonso got his pole taken yes, away from him. that's true. Mm. There was a penalty. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't actually think... Uh, maybe it's because he's been there for a little bit now, so he's kind of bedded in. But considering, um, like, Lewis got on top of George last year, I I think 
Judge should probably be given more credit this year for how he's come back. You know, he's he's mm. he he's got over that like Lewis stepping his game up thing, and he's come back to the point where he was at like the beginning of last year, probably, and certainly uh, where he was sort of the look like the equal of Lewis Hamilton. Mm. Yeah. I was I was reading an article literally on exactly this topic earlier, and I cannot remember on what website or who had written it, but it was it was exactly that. It was a perhaps Russell's performance at the start of this year has been a bit underrated. Mm. Yeah, I think he's done really well. Mm-hmm. We're um we're we're also seem to be going closer and closer to the point that. They're going to make Russell the number one driver, and they're going to put Antonelli into that car next year, which just seems really strange. Mm. I think I think it's a it's I think it's perfect not, not for Russell. Antonelli in. No, no, but I think it's perfect because the reason they didn't want to bring Russell into Mercedes when Bottas was there is because they were still winning world championships and constructors championships. Yeah, and the pr- the pressure you would do. I mean, I actually think they should have brought Russell in, and I think he would have been fine over you know, it. Where, in fact, I think it would have been easier for him to come into a good Mercedes than it would have do to come into a bad Mercedes. You know, it's in the same way as it was easier for Lewis Hamilton to come into Formula One and get into that McLaren. In his, you know, it's it would have been easier. It it would have been harder if he got into the McLaren in like the like, one that the one that Stoffel drove. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stoff was a great comparison. Mm. Um, so, I, yeah, I think I think he'd have been fine. But the thing is, they're not looking at that at the moment. I mean, you know, it's depending on how they progress. Maybe maybe they will be back back to where they they should be next year. But um, I think it's a good time to bring uh, if you if you're going to take the take the chance at all in a top team. There's. There's no reason to stick Antonelli in a mid-grid car when you're a mid-grid team already. Yeah. I just don't know if Antonelli is the right choice for that, though. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, you, you, might be, you might be right about the person. Mm. I'm wondering if, I uh, hate to say this, Drugovic Ooh. might be better, or buying Liam Lawson. If we're going to take someone from outside the sport, mm-hmm. I... I know that he's, you know, he's Mercedes' young kid and all that, but I think the ones who get taken straight from Formula Two into Formula One are the ones who have showed that they have earned it, which mm-hmm. is your Leclerc, Lando, Russell, mm. Albon. But was Lawson yeah. exceptional? No, he That's wasn't. That's what I mean. He was I, good, I, I, yeah, he, again, he's I solid. Want, I he was solid. Lawson. Mm. The, what they did with Lawson is they gave him a second season. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, you know, Albon had a couple of seasons in there. Um, mm, yeah. Lando was in one race in one season, then he spent the rest of the next season in there. I think that the ones who transfer straight into Formula 2 and show their worth and go straight into Formula 1 are worth it. Mm-hmm. The ones who transfer into Formula 2 don't really show their worth and then go straight into Formula 1 are your Logan Sargents. Mm-hmm. Joe, Joe was one of them. He was, in, he was in F2 for... Years, mm. Jolly and Palmer. Yeah, that goes a good mm. point a bit. Yeah. Roman, uh, Roman Grosjean. Mm. Yeah, Grosjean went back to it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Because he, um, he got pulled out of it because of the PK Junior thing. Yeah. Um, mm. Roberto Mary, another one. Yeah. Oh God, he still turns uh. up in it every now and then. Mm. Yeah. Still block me on Twitter. <laughs> hey, fellow kids. <laughs> 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 yeah, I um, I I'm. I think they have to give Antonelli a second season because he's spats eighth in the championship. He's not going to win the championship this year and they need to have him Mercedes ready. Mm. And I don't think they're going to have him Mercedes ready if he spends a year asking about in seventh place in a sprint race in F2 and then going into the big boy team. He's he, I, I think he like, I think he's 100% going to Mercedes next year. I, yeah, I agree. I, I, because they yeah. seem to be throwing so much focus on it, and if you're not, why aren't you buying Carlos Sainz Toto? Well, I... the only the only thing that I could do, that I would say there is, unless there is a quiet deal in principle to get Max Verstappen to go to Mercedes. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's the only thing, isn't it? I'm just, I'm just looking at person. just looking at a list of um, F2 drivers with the most with the most races, and oh, this should be good. You've got to go down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, you got to go down to the tenth most experienced F2 driver to find somebody that's regular in Formula 1, which is uh, Zhou Guan Yu. That's the thing. A good a good race driver does not need a lot of F2 races. Mm. You look at the I'm ones... Where above... am I... Sorry, you're going. Yeah, you look at the ones above him. Uh, mm. Ralph Boschung, Jay oh. Deruvela, Luca Giotto, Teo Pacher, Jack Aitken, Felipe Drogovic, Marcus Armstrong, Artem Markalov, Richard Bashur. <laughs> I was going to say, where in that list is Artem Markalov? <laughs> Two places Artem above Zhou. Oh, okay. I expected more. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I'm not saying that they should park him for four years in F2. They just need to give him that second season mm -hmm. to push him through. Because he's, he's very mm. young and he hasn't done your sort of your F3. He's taken a, a, a big yeah. jump all of a sudden. So he is, yeah. he, he can, he is probably someone who can afford to spend a little bit more time there. And who else has taken that jump from F4 to F2? Joshua Dirksen. <laughs> who no one's talking about in F1 terms, but does have a podium in F2. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just had, sort of appeared under the radar. It's like, oh, shit, he's yeah. good. Well, and at one point, very much over Zach Maloney's radar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Zane Maloney. Sorry, what did I say, Zach? Zach. Yeah, it's yeah. Zach Crawford you're thinking of. I was, I was thinking of Zach Crawley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's too much going on. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're going to put Antonelli in. It's good. I think I'm going to call it early. It'll be a mistake for the first year. They should put Ocon in there because Toto likes Ocon. Give him a year. Put Toto Antonelli will not in. like Ocon after very long when he starts inevitably driving into his teammate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Russell's in the Ferris wheel in Suzuka going, <laughs> how's he gone there? How's he gone there? Sorry. <laughs> um, right, uh, McLaren then. What could have been, mm. but for a Ferrari esque mm. strategy? I think mm. they left Lando out a lap too long. Yes. Yeah. Just for one, but yeah. Yeah. Because um, he was always going to struggle getting out of the pits on the slick tyres because of the massive puddle at the end of the pit lane. Mm hmm. And, of course, it wasn't getting as much traffic as the rest of the circuit, so the water didn't get cleared. And I don't. I think McLaren didn't take into account the extra second, possibly longer. Was it not the... Was the issue not that they didn't take into account that he would catch the safety car before coming into the pits? Yeah, because he actually caught, caught the safety car um, on the run to the hairpin. Yeah, I think they thought he would have the best part of a flying lap and he didn't mm. I think he just shot a half a one didn't mm. he and then the the pack are getting closer they hadn't caught him by the time he pitted mm -hmm. but of course there wasn't a big enough gap to um, feed back out into yeah yeah a rare strategy fuck up from McLaren you don't often get yeah. that yeah if they do it's often self inflicted for drivers overall the team mm. Mm. I think about that awful Russia race again Mm. Um, Piastri's tyres fell off at the end it felt like yeah, yeah he did so, go backwards yeah, as soon, soon as the Mercs got past him mm. he just um, slowed up completely that that does tend to be a Piastri though doesn't it yeah yeah There's, it's he's, something he's quite got common the, yeah he's got, a, he's got a, um, a touch of the Felipe Massas about him no, he can uh, he can take corners and not um, go straight on <laughs> and forget that he hasn't got traction control. <laughs> no, but do, do you know what I mean? There's like this this. this mm, the he's not someone who master. nurses the tires. Yeah, or, or I, I don't. Yeah, m maybe it is. It's it's more of a tire thing. But so you, you get certain drivers that you feel like they go to sleep halfway through a race, and you know th then they find themselves probably two two places behind where the where the car should have been. I don't think that's his destiny, by the way. I think mm -hmm. he's an exceptional driver and everything will be fine. But um, it's there's times where you're watching a race, especially when the two McLarens are together and you get past the maybe 17 lap, 20 lap mark 
and then you look up and you go, oh, Lando's eight seconds ahead of Piastri, and mm. I don't know when that happened. Yeah, there is still definitely a gap between Lando and Piastri mm-hmm. at the minute, but I think, like, like you say, I think it'll come in time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the Piastri's first half of the season was in a terrible car. That is true. Mm-hmm. And he's sort of getting to grips with um, a car that's competitive from the start. Yes, that's this, fair. This time round. So, you know, last last year he got the, he got the opportunity just to ease into things. Um, mm. because he couldn't he couldn't do any more than that because he just yeah. didn't didn't have the wheels under him. Um I think he's you know, I think his learning curve's actually been steeper this year than it was last year. Because um as soon as the season started it was like, Oh right, the McLaren's quick. Make them you know, make use of it. Mm. And he's ha- I think he's had to learn more in the first part of this season than he actually did learn in probably say up to the summer break last year mm. mm-hmm. just i think it doesn't help either that the you you have a a lando norris which is I, I personally think laid claim to like one of the top three drivers in formula one now i'd argue he's the second best driver <laughs> yeah i i i I, it, I mean to me to me watching races um he, if somebody's going to beat Verstappen when they're given machinery close to or equal to, he he's the one that jumps to me at the minute. I, I don't. The, the, there was the pie in the sky talk about Leclerc being in the championship hunt. You know, if he'd won this weekend, he'd be within a, a win of Max Verstappen. I I, uh, I I do not see like Leclerc being able to beat Max Verstappen ever. If Max is in a decent car, mm. Mm. and now of course Lando's only within seven points of Leclerc, so that's it. And unfortunately, like Verstappen has grown that lead. You know, it's uh, I, I wish this McLaren had been the McLaren they brought to the first race. But at least the McLaren they brought to the first race was better than the McLaren they brought to the first race last year. Yeah, oh, yeah, and it's mm-hmm. and it's it's getting sooner, and it's. I would think if McLaren can keep this up all year, um, where they are sniffing at Red Bull, if they don't come to the first race next year with a car capable of winning the first Grand Prix, they've slipped backwards. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you're spot on with that. Yeah, I agree. Christ, that doesn't happen often. <laughs> <laughs> um, that just leaves Red Bull. A tale of two drivers. A, yes. a binary <laughs> result, you might say. It's one way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. A result and a non-result. Um, check out in Q1. Again. Checked out. Mm. Checked out is, might be our new feature on this show <laughs> check out when when did sergio check out <laughs> um yeah he can't qualify at the moment yeah and there doesn't seem to be a particular reason why it's just mm. it's, it's just not coming together there's no sort of he was blocked or he had an off it just didn't I, happen i think um, you sell him sell him short because it's not like he covered himself in glory in the race either well no <laughs> But there is a there is a reason why. Oh. It's because it's after May seventh or so. I see. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got to that point. It's it, it it comes earlier every year, doesn't it? Um, what, May the seventh. May seventh. May. It came May... late this year because it's a leap year. Yeah. <laughs> I meant Perez. <laughs> 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 I know what you get. I know what you're getting at. Cinco down the table. Yeah, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco goodbye. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, yes, he's. It, it does seem to be Miami onwards. He's shit. I mean, my, Miami least, ended his Miami season Sunday. last year because Miami ended his season last year because Max, in the same car with the same age of tyres, managed to destroy something like a 22 second lead that he had. 
Yeah. Um, this year, um, he's just so far off the pace. Is he not getting on with the car? Is I mean, is it a complete and total and utter max car, and he can't drive it, and he's having the same problems that Gasly, <sighs> Ricardo, Albon? Is that an excuse, though? Because, I mean, like the Ricardo thing, I don't. Ricardo didn't like struggle, struggle with the car. He just, it's just was nowhere near Max as quick beaten. as Max. Yeah. Mm. Like the. I, I have no doubt that if, if Ricardo had stayed at Red Bull and just gone, oh, well, here we are, um, I don't think any of this, like, iffy Ricardo would have ever happened. I think he. I actually think he would have ended up coming back towards Max once he, you know, he'd, he'd settled himself into where he was and the fact that off oh, you know Max is pretty quick. Um I mean what where else do you want? This is the thing. If you're a Formula One driver and obviously they're gonna tailor the car more to Max Verstappen's style of driving, it's still the best car on the grid. So at, at what point do you do you go, oh it's it's designed for Max? Well that doesn't that just mean that you're not an adaptable driver? And if that's the case, doesn't that mean that you probably don't deserve to be in the top team in Formula One? Go on, I'm going to make a hat trick, aren't I? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. I'm just, I'm just going to go sit in the shower and cry. The <laughs> there is, there is something in that though, isn't there? That for for a Feel car, just real, to... I appear now. <laughs> but yeah, for for a car to work for two drivers, those two drivers need to have similarities in their driving style and if red bull keep hiring people that don't work the same way max works then it's not going to work yeah they, I mean, they had one and he left well yeah there was yeah. that yes um your your top drivers like like exceptional drivers like mm-hmm. schumacher's and um max verstappen they they tend to like cars very on the nose don't they like really pointy cars that they can mm. get into corners quickly yeah. Um now that that meant that Ferrari back in the day was a very like tailored car towards that on the nose sort of thing that Schumacher was a big fan of. Barrichello dealt with it, Massa dealt with it, Eddie Irvine dealt with it. You know, it's the it's it's the nature of the beast. You could you've come into a team knowing that it's that the car's gonna be tailed towards this guy. People know how that guy drives and knows know what he wants from a car. Yeah, so, funnily enough, the only ones that couldn't deal with it were the standing drivers during that period: Fisichella, uh, Salo, and Badoa. Yeah. Badoa. Mm. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I, I, I don't even think Badoa's talent level got him to the point where he understood the failings of the car. <laughs> I, I, I think he blew it before that kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, have I ever told you this, Kieran? That uh, like, I um, I was at Be- in Belgium when he drove the Ferrari, uh, oh, and God. I I was the you know the um, you know that tiny little straight. I can't remember what it's called. There's there's a right hander that takes you onto it. Then there's a tiny little straight, and then another right hander, and that takes you on the long back straight towards the bus stop or the. Oh long... yeah, that little yeah. bit where the sector cuts out. Yeah. yeah. So I was at the towards the second corner of that that little straight and i turned around to to the other corner because i heard a formula one car to see luca badoa coming backwards through the corner (laughs) (laughs) it was so bizarre (laughs) worst race for uh, like a guy that supports british motorsport to go to because that was button and hamilton taken out by grosjean in the first like uh, the after a rouge, <laughs> all the hopes were on. I was about to say, Deresta. It's before Deresta's time. Was it? Would have Anthony Davidson still been kicking about then? I wonder. No, Anthony no, Davidson would have been well gone, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that was it. I think that was it yeah. for British drivers. That sucks. Yeah. We watched the Hamilton and Button crash on a TV in the C terminal because we were just about, about to get on a boat to go to a. Waterborne christening, which turned into a waterborne wedding. Oh yes. 
That's for a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in Devon um, <laughs> with my stepmum's mate who started dating our family friend. <laughs> that wasn't interesting, was it? <laughs> so, it started off interesting where you were like, you you were you you were on holiday with your stepmum's mate. Started in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, we of, went to visit them. Kind of te- kind of tailed off after a while. And um, they put they put Star of Pramen in a big barrel, and they said we added some some caramel toffee to the barrel in the water and the ice, so it tastes sweeter. And I fucking believed them. <laughs> Course bad, they had me on. I was 17. <laughs> Training beer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, to- talk- talking of tailing off, that's how uh, Checo finished his race. <laughs> smooth, yes. smooth link. <laughs> um, yeah, and ended up getting um, getting a, what was it, a three place grid penalty, five place grid oh, penalty. Oh, did he get a penalty yeah. for yeah, it? Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, he has been, he has been penalised. Um, for bringing the car back in an unsafe state, because the team told him to. Mm. Because God, starting nineteenth in Spain is awful. <laughs> and I think it was because they didn't want to bring out a safety car mm. just in, just in case. Yeah. Yeah, they fined the team as well, didn't they? Yeah, twenty five thousand euros. So, um, yeah, another another bad one for him. But he's got he's got a two year deal. Well, a one plus one. Mm. So he's, you know, he, he's fine. <laughs> it's the, it's the usual, isn't it? You get your new, you get a new contract, mm. and you celebrate by wrecking the car. That's what he did. That's what Sonoda did. Mm. Yeah, it's fact. That's yeah. what happens. So we're just waiting for Hulk to take out a Sauber. <laughs> <laughs> um, then Bye. yeah, then, then Max. Mm. Um. Yeah. Didn't get off to a great start. Um, was stunningly nowhere near as fast as Lando in the first phase. I mean, Lando mm-hmm. was pulling out about three, four seconds a lap on him. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the McLaren had the um, had the intermediates working really well, uh, and then post safety car got the lead. And I'm not saying that he won it because of a safety car in the same way that I'm not saying that Lando won Miami because of a safety car. You've still got to keep keep your position out front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, got the pass. I think that pass would have come soon anyway, because um, his tyres were three laps, three laps older. So they've got a little bit more heat into them. Mm. Mm-hmm. So even if yeah, Land- you- even if Lando had come out um, first behind the safety car. I think Max would have got him within a lap. Yeah. Possible, yeah. Maybe. I think you've always got the chance, though, haven't you? You've always mm. got, the, got that chance to to defend, especially because there's no DRS, is there, on the first lap? No. No. Yeah. Oh. I, if, I was, if I was McLaren, I might have foreseen that that was definitely going to be a safety car and pit regardless, because even if the safety car only comes out halfway, whilst you're halfway down the pit lane, you're still saving time. You're not saving the whole whack, but you're saving a little bit of time. Yeah. Do you think yeah, they'll go uh, hanging for a red flag though? I think it's tough. I think it's 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 tough to uh you know, to, to call it when you've got track position. Yeah, it's so mm. much easier to do those things when you're not leading the race. And like literally any other any other position on the grid, it's easier to make that, that mm-hmm. choice. Yeah. I remember remember Lewis in Hungary a few years ago when he was the only person who didn't pit. Yeah, and he had the, there was that the, the restart, and he was the only person on, on his grid. own. Yeah, lights yeah. lights out, and away he goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant that was. Um, but... it's literally how like forty percent of Twitter see Formula One as well. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that one car, forty four percent surely. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Canadian Grand Prix jokes are landing. Uh, rock stars and wankers. Um, first rock star pre race, Mary McGee. Oh, she was ace. That was fun. I enjoyed that. I don't know what this is. She is um, former four and two wheel Canadian driver. 
Um, oh, somebody else told me about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. did bikes, yeah. switched to cars, um, handed Brondel's ass to him. It was very entertaining, wasn't it? She, mm. she, they should give her like a commentary session. She'd be wild. Yeah. He was being all, oh, let's be nice to the old lady. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> Yeah, what was it? He asked, he asked her if it was her first Formula One race, and she was like, "I saw Jim Clark, you know." <laughs> yeah. I, I was at the first yeah. Formula One race. <laughs> I was kind of surprised she didn't like pull a wheelie in the wheelchair at the end as she as she went on off the, the up the grid. <laughs> Apparently, she was there as Lewis's guest this weekend. Very nice. Good for her. N- not in a Wayne Rooney style guest, I'm assuming. Oh God, we hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated. That, I mean, <laughs> everything about it. tonight's show's escalated. I don't, I don't get it. I don't Wayne, Wayne it. Rooney um, was once found, um, I, I think factually, but I'm going to throw an allegedly in there just in case, to be employing uh, the services of ladies of the night who happen to be grandmothers. Uh, makes sense when you look at mm. the sugar baby we're out with. <laughs> Was she in the Sugar Babes? It the, was who the, in the... Colleen. I don't know. Colleen was... No, Colleen's not a singer. No, I know. We, we, but I mean, which... every every woman under the age of 40 has been in the Sugar Babes at one point. <laughs> was it the Sugar Babes? What was it? What band was she in? He's, Colleen. No, I was going to say, Colleen no, was never in a band. No, no. Um, the Lewis Hamilton's ex-girlfriend. Oh, oh Nicole Scherzinger. Doll. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Pussycat she was about 40, 40 years older than him, wasn't she? I think she, she still was, yeah, claims seven. to be 40. She's. Yeah. I think she's. She's got to forty and just stopped aging. Mm. <laughs> it's not. It's not flying with me. That I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Nicole oh, Scherzinger is forty-six next week. Louis Walsh has claimed she is somewhat older. Oh. <laughs> yeah. he, he claims to have seen her real birth certificate when they were X Factor judges together. <laughs> This has taken a turn. Yes. Moving away from the X Factor, about as far away from the X Factor as you can get, other rock stars. Ah, yes. <laughs> Matt Cardle. No, um, where are we at? Uh, weather. The weather yeah. is a yes. great shout. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a Pirelli in there because you can actually race on the uh, intermediates yes. and wet. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As yes. it turns out, you know, it, it was Old Man Johnson from the amusement park all along. It was just that Formula is... One wouldn't let them. <laughs> that was such a good thing as well. The fact that we had a wet race. There wasn't even a sniff of a. Is this going to start on a safety car? Are we going to? Are we going to wait until like mid August to like for it to dry out? Mm. Yeah. Uh, it was just no. We're we're going we're going racing, and yep. we had a start with rain, and lo and behold, everybody managed to get around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, no, nobody binned it on the first couple of turns. I, w- I was expecting a safety car by the end of lap one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it's fair. You know, um, I'm also going to go for Rockstar nomination, F2 and F3, for not being there because we'd have had to wait ages until they'd cleaned up the track. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> As it was, there was a massive shunt in the Porsche race, but it's the Porsche <laughs> race, so there's always a massive shunt. Thank you, Statman, yeah. for that tweet. Um... Other, other rock stars. Um, uh, TV on by Mercedes. accident. Yeah, Mercedes. Mercedes and didn't their, get it their 100% upgrade. ever. No, but when you but when you there. look at where they started this year, yeah. and you know that I I still don't quite believe that. I I know Russell had pace towards the end. I I don't think they were quite white like race winners. This weekend, I think they were really, really close. Mm. But if George, if George had been ahead of uh, Verstappen, I still think Verstappen gets finds a way to get past him. Mm-hmm. I mean, Max usually finds a way to get past everyone. That's fair, but uh, the, the improvement's great, and it's yeah, you know, we we want to see Mercedes up the front, don't we? Mm. Yeah, it's um, Jacques for being um, entertaining. Always is. Yeah. He probably he's pro- he probably ticks both to be honest. He's a bit of both. Gene, Gene Simmons. Simmons. Gene Simmons. Mm. He, is that man, I don't want to be harsh to him on on just looks, but is he the world's baldest man? Yeah, he's, he's up there. <laughs> he's, that man's head is shiny. <laughs> 
he 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 doesn't age either. Like as soon as soon as he shaved all his hair off, he just looks like Jacques Villeneuve, yeah. which looks a bit like Lex Luthor. <laughs> Weirdly, I was thinking he looks like Jesse Eisenberg with the bald. Yep. Head. So yes, the Lex <laughs> Luthor does. Yeah. I can see where I you're coming from. It's it's one up from Duncan Goodhue, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> One for, the, I, I one for the kids there. <laughs> yes, but, <laughs> one for the Brits. I mean, just... I, I appreciate any in in the sanitized world of Formula One, the um, the like the Rosberg or Jacques Villeneuve, who's who they've they've like Villeneuve's kind of in the in a position I think where he kind of doesn't care. Um, and I think maybe Rosberg has got himself into the position in Formula One where he has enough clout mm. where he can kind of say what he wants anyway, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. I don't know what. Um, I, I, there's a difference there. One quit at the top, the other one still possibly hasn't officially no, quit. I, I I saw the Villeneuve punditry styling compared to Eddie Jordan, which felt sort of. I can kind of see where that's coming from. Similar real life haircuts. Well, probably. <laughs> Do you know what the thing is? I uh, the problem with Villeneuve, um, I always feel sorry for what happened to him with cars and the, the Formula One he sort of fell into after his first World Championship. Because when you think about his like, like career trajectory when he came into Formula One, came in with a load of hype behind him, came in with a well established top teammate who beat him to the world championship i personally think even if damon hill would have stayed in williams the year after villeneuve would have still become world champion um very similar to lewis hamilton like very similar entry into formula one for both Mm -hmm. of them um i think villeneuve should have been like a multiple world champion and just he the the only chance he had to he had two chances to win a world championship one when he was a rookie and one was the ne- one was the next year then he never had that those chances ever again yeah because he just ended up driving a succession of sheds after yeah. Williams stopped being blue yeah and it's it was just one of those awkward positions where he was in Formula One where if you weren't in a Ferrari or a McLaren you were done and. Ferrari had Schumacher, McLaren had Mika Hakkinen, and you know at, at the time, and the there was there was no way of for him to get into a top team. So he went and formed his own. But well, I, genuinely, I think between him and it was it was it Paul Stoddard, Paul not Paul Stoddard, who was the the guy that came in to manage oh. VAR that was a big friend of his. Um, Dave Richards. No, Dave. no, it was before. It was before Richards. Yeah. It was. Um, was it Paul Stoddard? No, uh, Paul Stoddard was um, Minardi. Minardi. Uh, um, hang on a second. B A R. Uh, oh God, I can't remember his. Name. Either way, he had, he had a team which had like all of the money in the world because it had so much cigarette ad, uh, sponsorship on it. Craig Pollock. Mm. Craig Pollock. Oh, we said about him earlier, didn't we? Yeah. Craig Pollock was, him and Villeneuve were really, really big friends. And I think Villeneuve and him came to an arrangement where it's like, look, I'm probably not going to win world championships or even races ever again. So what I'm going to win is my bank account. And that's, Mm. he he just spent the the remaining remaining years of, in Formula One, like, making the most bank that he could make without going to Ferrari to make the most bank. He essentially pulled an Eddie Eddie Irvine at the back of the grid. Yeah. Four uh, times. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went to he went to Formula E because uh, Leonardo DiCaprio wanted an X F one world champion. They got him they put him straight into a Formula E car with no testing. Mm-hmm. He finished about 14th in three races, and they all went, but you're an F1 driver. And he went, yeah, but that was like 15 years ago. What are you not understanding? And that was it. He went. That was it. <laughs> um, we got the uh, Not A Wanker Award from um, Ocon. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Don't call me a wanker award. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Irish Canuck on Discord. Um, nominated uh, Ocon as a rock star, much as it kills me to say that. Um, somebody else replied, who was it? Uh, ELT311. How about just not wanker? Hmm. Okay. Um, so I came up with a new category. Cold plays drummer. Not a rock star, but not the biggest wanker around him. <laughs> Interesting. Is that Will Champion? Is that his name? Yes, yeah. Will Champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cold, the Coldplay Drummer Award. Okay. Um, right, wankers. Perez. The other three members of Coldplay. <laughs> what, Chris Martin, uh, per- Chris Martin's ego, and Chris Martin's spare ego. Chris Martin, the guitar. Talking about Coldplay and he's Chris, falling off. Um, Sorry, anyway, yeah, anyway, other wankers. Um, yeah, uh, Perez is definitely up there. Logan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Signs for taking out Alban. Mm. Um, the bad luck, the bad luck genie that sat on Alban's rear wing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. The weather. For How? not coming back, it would have been so much better if it had gone from dry to wet again, right at the end. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, the, the weather for the night is a not wankery. podium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ferrari. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because um, it, it's what, what what they've managed to do is when they just got the like the sniff of we might be in a title fight, have just blown it. <laughs> Just like it took them one race, one race to go. We might be, we might be able to do this. To, ah, probably not. No. <laughs> and by all accounts, the biggest wanker of the weekend, the race promoters. Oh, what? um, they... hang on, a- anthem. Mm. Oh, anthem people. That's just a, that's just a what the fuck. Yeah, to be fair, it's the anthem not picked the... by the race promoters. Yeah, the anthem actually, yes, by them. Yes, so we'll yeah. go race promoters for the anthem. Um, telling the security guards on Friday not to let people in because um, practice had been called off when it hadn't. Um, I have no idea about this. No, I missed that scandal. Yeah, uh, the promoter responded after a breakdown in communication has left some race fans unable to enter the track on Friday because they've been told that both practice sessions have been cancelled due to rain. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, every, every temporary structure that they um, put up uh, leaked. Yeah. Um, the teams had to uh, the teams had to struggle with um, water running down various bits of electronics, and um, didn't have enough security to stop um, fans invading the track during the cool down lap. Cool. Good. Well run event then. Yes. Mm. Um, for only mm. for only the second time in um, following Formula One have I seen an FIA summons for after the race for the promoters, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was um, Baku. When, oh, what was Baku? For? Um, when they were starting, when the when they were setting up the photo pit at the end of the pit lane. Oh, oh and, yes. Uh, yes. Ocon, Ocon, Ocon was trying to make a pit pitted. stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But all in all, I would uh, I would give that as a good race. Hmm. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I I would say the last race I enjoyed that much was probably the Saudi Arabia where Lewis and Max had it out. Yeah, it was mm. a great race. Unfortunately, we've got Spain next, which is a track that all the teams mm. know all that well. is a test track, uh-huh. and chances are they will finish in the places that they're meant to, unless something blows up or falls off. Yeah, testing testing at a circuit they race on really needs to be something that's. They don't like test done. there anymore, do they? Do they not? No, they test in Bahrain. No, it's, ba- now. it's been Bahrain oh, for the last two yeah. years, but how much data yeah. are the teams going to have? Oh, I mean, yeah. on Spain. Yeah, it's a slightly better position, I suppose, isn't it? If it's if if they're not testing there, I was I was thinking it was still back to normal normal times. Yeah, the but... the need to the need to test somewhere where they don't mm-hmm. race. I mean, Paul Ricard is the ideal testing. Venue. Have we got race changes, or was that done last year? 
I can't remember. They, I don't think um, I watched last year's. I think I went to watch ditch, the TT. Did they ditch the chicane? Yeah, they got ri- they got rid of the chicane. So now it's um, oh, so it's the MotoGP. Yeah, so it's the MotoGP but... layout, and it's the one uh, one long right hander. Yeah, which is well, at least they can at least straight. they can overtake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's going to be a first. Um, did they do that last year? Uh, I can't yes, remember. yes, they did. Right. Uh, what was it like last year? Did we have a decent race? Behind. I can't remember. I Anything remember watching it. it on on like on the Sky Plus afterwards, and I don't, I couldn't tell you anything about it. No, no <laughs> which I, I think probably nothing. tells you what all you need to know. Yeah, like mm. like you say, you you went out and watched the TT. I did. Uh, talking <laughs> talking of which, we have just had that on the Isle of Man. Um, did the Manx contingent on here have fun? Yes. Yeah, it was. I I worked. I, I worked a lot of TT. I didn't. I, I oddly enough for me, I never usually watch any any practices, and I usually get go, get to watch some races. I didn't actually get to see any races this year. I just listened to them on the radio, but I did watch some practices. I I I, I got to see one race. You, you saw the record breaking mm. race. I did, mm. and uh, that was it. And I was um, either busy or hung over the rest of the time. <laughs> yeah, I did have a nice barbecue though. Where after you sent me a link to what may or may not have been an iffy stream, wouldn't catch me doing anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have Le Mans this weekend. Yes, uh, yay! And there, I think there's going to be a decent um, XF1 contingent. Uh... <laughs> Isn't it normally? No current F1 drivers again. Nobody's done it since Hulk. Did anyone know that Hulk had won Le Mans? <laughs> On his own. On his own. I heard about it. Yeah. On a scooter. Isn't Antonio Giovinazzi among the defending champions? In a Ferrari. Mm. Yes. Um, features the return to a car of Sebastian Bourdais as well. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, dri- he's driving the Cadillac. Um We've got um, Bode, Felipe Nasa, um, Alex Lynn, who's done some testing, Kamui Kobayashi, Sebastian Buemi, Brendan Hartley yeah. going for another experience. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, <laughs> the first, the first uh, professional racing driver to get in touch with us um, oh. when we started the pod, Norman Natter. Yes. He's, oh, really? Yeah. He is teaming up with Callum Eilert and Will Stevens. Good luck understanding their accents. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking of... Um, just, talk- just out of interest, I should probably know this. Did we speak to Norman Natto? No, we didn't show? because he doesn't speak English. Right. Which does raise the That'll question why he was listening. <laughs> he un- right, he understands and writes English, but he doesn't speak it. I see. So he's, so he's li- listening to English language stuff. Yeah, to- yeah. So got it. he's listened to the pod and he got in touch, but he couldn't come on the show because his English isn't good. Spoken English isn't good enough. Right. Okay. Well, it's been a few years, so if you still listen, Norman, so if you're still listening, you're, Norman, you're feeling, yeah, you know, get, yeah, get get in touch. Bonjour. Mm-hmm. And uh, Danny Kivia we'll is uh, in a Lamborghini. <laughs> My, sorry, my only in Fools and Horses episode. Chivuje <laughs> <laughs> Unglas Cassis, Rocky. <laughs> oh, and Kieran, you've got to look out for Team 311. Jack Aitken, Pipo Durrani and Felipe Drogovic. I know um, Daniel Kvyat does not have a nationality on the entry form. I don't think he managed to get his Italian licence through. Oh. <laughs> Well, Kuvia in his Russian accent turning up. Ah, Mamma Mia. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know why I even tried. <laughs> yeah, but, sure. yeah, but Mamma, Mamma Mia means something completely different to someone from Yorkshire. It's telling your mum you're home. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Stolen from Lucy Beaumont, unfortunately. Um, oh. Yeah, talking oh. talking to real life racing drivers. I do have an apology to make. A couple couple of shows ago, I did say that uh, FC Motorsports were uh, the only racing team with our logos on, and I uh, had it pointed out to me in no uncertain terms that Matt Steele, who's been on the pod and um, three of us have met when he came over to the island to do some sim racing and um, get drunk, um, he has got the three legs four wheels logo on his racing Porsche. And um, Adam Smith and I think uh, his wife Lisa as well take part in autocross racing in the Detroit area. And they've both got three legs, four wheels, logos on their cars. So there are four, well, three teams 
I don't know if Adam cool. and Lisa enter as a team or do it separately, but there are three or four teams with three Legs Four Wheels logos on their cars. Any other teams want to get in touch about putting a logo on, um, give us a shout. Yeah. Well, it's worth a try. Um, three Legs Four Wheels at gmail.com, um, at Three Legs Four Wheels on the socials. Individually on Twitter, we are at Sean Cowper. Out Kieran is boring. At the Lee Stevens and at Pablo One Hundred and the soon to be returning Flood, who uh, has now got house movie things sorted out and uh, is rebuilding his home studio, is at Flood Twenty One. Mm. Um, and don't forget, if you uh, want to take advantage of our offer with Magic Mind, um, we've got a limited offer that you can use now. It gets you up to forty forty eight percent off your first subscription or twenty percent off a one time purchase. Just use the code Four Wheels S Twenty, and it's F O U R Wheels Twenty. Or you can get it, um, claim it at the checkout. Just go to magicmind.com slash Four Wheels F O U R again. Um, right, that is about it, and uh, we'll see you next week with Post Lamon and Priest. Is that like Post Malone? I, oh, <laughs> God. I was racking my brain for a Post joke. Post Lamon. Like Post the, Lamon. Very, little... very, very quickly while we're on the Lamon um, thing, best name in one of the, um, I think it says the GTM category, there is a French driver called Erwan Bastard. <laughs> Mr. I'm... Bastard. Um, I, I've raced against him on Have iRacing. You? He's actually he's actually pretty rapid. He's a he's, quick he's a quick bastard. He's got a silver license. He's in Le Mans. He's got a silver license. Although the the best name for a driver in Le Mans, let me just pull the full name up. Oh, As... I feel like I've, I've derailed us. <laughs> you have a bit, but it has to be Ferdinand Vonamir, Maria Balthus, Keith, Michael, Otto, and Tal. Barnum, Leonard von Habsburg, Lothringer. He is ex-royal, though, to be fair to him. Yes, true. He is, he is also Jerome D'Ambrosio's brother-in-law. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I quite like Bertram Baguette. <laughs> and that's not me going back into the Del Boy, you know, French. It's literally Bertram Baguette. Did Chris call him Bertie Breadstick? <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Right, we're waffling again. Um, Time to go. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.